Hello, and in this video, we're going to take a look at programming your Spike Prime. To do that, we're going to work in the Spike Prime app. So let's take a look. I'm here on the Spike Prime app homepage. Now to program my Spike Prime, I'm going to use a new project. So I click on new project. Now you'll see I have here the choice of three different types of project. The first is icon blocks. In an icon blocks project, the different features of your Spike Prime are represented by different icon blocks. For example, this block will make a motor turn for one revolution. This block will make the Spike Prime display a smiley face on its light matrix. And this block would make your Spike Prime play an appropriate noise. If you want to develop your skills slightly further, instead of creating a icon block project, you can create a word block project. And you'll notice that this looks very much like Scratch. On the left hand side here, you have your block palette with individual groups of blocks organized into different toolboxes. So you have the blue motors commands, purple light, orange control, and green operators, as well as a variety of others. You also have the ability to add in additional blocks by clicking on the button at the bottom and then choosing the relevant blocks you wish to bring in. Whether that's additional blocks for allowing you to display images or text, or whether you want to bring weather information in from the internet and make your spike respond to it. Finally, you have the ability to download the programs you create to your Spike Prime. You can choose to go to download, select the appropriate storage position that you want to save your program into, and then click download, and that program will be saved into that relevant location on your Spike Prime. You can then use the buttons on the front of your Spike Prime to navigate to that program and run it, independent of your laptop. This feature is essential for First LEGO League Challenge Division, where you're not allowed to bring your laptop to the game table. To program your Spike Prime then, you will need to choose a stack header. The first one that's automatically populated when you create a new project is when program starts. However, you also have the choice of a variety of others. These could be related to various sensors, be it color, touch, or ultrasonic distance, or they could draw from the onboard gyroscopes and accelerometers. Choose the relevant stack header and then choose the relevant commands to run underneath it. So here I said, when the program starts, I want my spike prime to move forward for 10 centimeters. Bear in mind, if you've built your robot differently to that prescribed in the lesson and you've plugged your motors into alternative ports, you may need to use the set movement motors block to tell your robot which motors that are connected are being used for movement. Then I would simply choose to either play or download my program to my Spike Prime and off we go. As well as using word blocks, you may wish to program your robot using Python. To do that, we're going to create a new project as before, but this time we're going to select Python rather than icon blocks or word blocks. You'll notice that on the screen, you have a typical Python IDE and on the right hand side, you have a collapsible knowledge base. Within that, you can find a series of snippets that you can copy and paste across into your code stack, ready to work with and eventually compile onto your Spike Prime. You can collapse the knowledge base out of your way if you require additional space on the screen. And otherwise, the controls in here are exactly the same as for the other two programming environments. Connect to your Spike in the top left, and download your program in the bottom right. 